let's go learn about Costa Rica. Welcome to a video with Hill. <laughs> we got a tripod now, we're killing it. We also have a microphone. <laughs> I was in Costa Rica for 15 days. Um, I got married, hiked some stuff, scuba dove, scuba dived, scuba dove. That doesn't sound right, but I'm thinking that's right. Uh, we surfed for the first time. We did a lot of stuff that I have never done before, which is really, really cool. And I visited some new places in Costa Rica that I've never been before. And kind of an overview about Costa Rica. Why you wanna to go to Costa Rica? Do you wanna to go to Costa Rica? I don't know. Here's some little overview of Costa Rica, different areas to visit if you're looking for certain activities to do or if you're an active person or a beach bum. There's definitely things to do for everybody. There's environments for everybody. Costa Rica is a very tiny, tiny, tiny country that originally when you're planning a trip, you might be like, hey, I can get over this country. I can see the whole thing, one trip. That's not true. It has 5% of the world's biodiversity. It's bordered by Nicaragua and Panama. Okay, so when you're up by Monteverde area, Guanacaste, Nicaragua's on your border. When you come down towards the Caribbean, you have um, Panama. Here's info about the cloud forest. <laughs> Cloud first occurs when tropical or subtropical mountain environments have the atmosphere conditions to allow a constant cloud cover. So in Monteverde Cloud Forest, it's about two hours and 45 minutes from San Jose. If they lose your luggage and Monteverde is your first location like it was ours, they had to drive a long time to get your luggage there, which kind of sucked. So pack a pack a carry-on bag that's small that includes the stuff that you're gonna do on your first day because we were had none of our rain gear we had to buy like last minute rain jackets that were kind of crappy and it was pouring all day the cloud forest when you stay in the cloud forest it is wet so you're in a cloud um, so it's not weird when you're in the cloud forest for your sheets to be like damp when you're in your hotel room or hostel or what have you but it is wet expect to be wet you're always wet it's cloud forest the cool thing about being in a cloud forest, besides being in the clouds, humidity allows a very specific environment for certain plants and it just lets these plants grow to this beautiful, a magical jungle that is just, that no one else gets unless they have a cloud forest. I guess there's only 1% of cloud forests that exist in general and in Costa Rica is one of them, which is really cool. Costa Rica actually has three cloud forests. So they have the Monteverde Cloud Forest, which the Cloud Forest Reserve, which I've been to twice, which is beautiful. They also have hummingbirds there. Santa Elena Cloud Forest Reserve, which is known, you're known to see a bunch of sp spider monkeys, actually sponsored by Switzerland um, to help with uh, fight against deforestation. So they planted a bunch of trees, now they're thriving. So that one is called the Foesque Interno de los Niños. Uh, children's internal rainforest and they also provide like overnight stays with the biologists not like with them but like in their lab and you get to learn more in depth about the cloud forest which is pretty cool i feel like there's multiple sections of costa rica so there's two big splits of like if you're an adventure person you want the kind of like monteverde three hour distance, cloud forest, Arenal, Lake Arenal, the volcano is Arenal Volcano. They have this green lagoon thing. That's more for those who want to do more of the ecotourism. They want to learn about the biodiversity. They want to see some birds. They see a volcano. They want to hike more. Those are the more intricate, more active things. So if you're interested in going to Costa Rica for more of the 
get lost in nature. Well, you're gonna get lost in nature no matter where you go in Costa Rica, but if you're more of a hiker, you want something, you know, a volcano, you want something like more active. Not too far from the cloud forest. It's three hours and 15 minutes. Arenal Volcano. Arenal Volcano is like this beautiful, picturesque volcano. Now, you're not guaranteed to see the top of it, um, but if you stay in our La Fortuna area, Arenal for a while, a couple days, you'll, you'll, you'll see it eventually, um, depending on the weather. So it is considered still an active volcano. There was an eruption in 1968, and 87 people did die due to the eruption. So the hike up to RNL Volcano, the base of it, is considered an easy hike. It's 3.3 miles, and it's 429 feet in elevation. We hike to the base of the volcano. We can see Arnold. <laughs> Lake. It's kind of so that's in San Carlos Alajuela. You can also see Lake Arena. You can kayak the lake. You can take a boat ride across the lake. In this area, you can go through La Fortuna, which is known for this big, beautiful waterfall. La It's called, considered the adventure capital of Costa Rica. Like I kind of said earlier, this is where the adventure people want to go. We have a 480 step hike down to the waterfall. We also got provided like a fresh pineapple, which is delicious because pineapple is the best thing ever. If I could eat it every day in Costa Rica, I would. You can swim at the waterfall, which is really nice, cold water. And there's like a little fishies in there, it's kind of cute, which we did. It was my second time doing that waterfall as well, but it was my first time swimming in it, so that was really cool. While you're by the La Fortuna waterfall, you can do a hanging bridge hike or there's certain hikes. I didn't know the hike I did was considered a hanging bridge hike. My husband is very scared of heights. He used to jump out of helicopters, but he's, he's got a whole theory about his great heights. If it's not connected to the ground, he's fine. It's plane, fine, helicopter, fine. If it's supposed to be connected to the land and it's not, or it is connected to the land and it's not, and it's like high up, he gets freaked out. I don't know, I don't get it, but I'm not scared of heights, so we'll leave it alone. Okay, so he only made it across two of them. So if you're scared of heights, Maybe not the hike for you, but they are really cool. They are really great pictures in general. Like, who doesn't like taking pictures of hanging bridges? They are so fun to go around, but I'm not gonna be that person that bounces on them. There was a girl on our tour uh, in my class, that trip first one, and we were in the dark. It was pouring down rain. It was our first night hike. I've never even done a night hike. And she kept like jamming, like bouncing up and down. I was like, girl, I'm gonna kill you. Like you're, I'm trying to take pictures. I'm trying to like enjoy this. And you're jumping and sound trying. Don't do that to people. Tabaca, Tabocan, hot springs, which I don't believe we went into those hot springs. We went to not populated hot springs here on the side and it wasn't very touristy at all. Um, there was a lot of like local people in it. A lot of people were in it and they're just sitting there and they would bring a drink and they'd bring a cooler and they're just drinking this nice, beautiful hot spring. It was really cool. Um, I forgot about that. I found a picture of it and I was like, oh my God, I completely forgot about this. And I'm pretty sure at some point I had a video of it with some people we met and uh, I have no idea where any of this footage is. So good. On that close to the Arno volcano, there's another volcano called the Chateau Volcano. This is the volcano I was talking about where it comes to the top and it has that green lagoon on the, on the top. And it looks like mossy water. It's very cool. This Chateau Volcano is 1,140 meters tall. And it's, the lagoon is 500 meters tall. You can hike up to the lagoon, 1.5 to two hour hike, but I heard it is not an easy hike. We migrated down to Tamarindo. Um, the Pacific.
Pacific side in Guanacaste and Tamarindo Beach. We stayed by like Playa Negra. So I wasn't on Playa Negra, I was on Playa Aviana. So every time I'm saying Playa Negra, I'm talking about Playa Aviana. Playa Negra is a surfing beach though. This is where our Airbnb was. It's very secluded, very quiet, and you walk from the Airbnb down this little trail. You go through a mangrove uh, little walkway. It's not little, it's probably like a 10 minute walk. And um, it's really cool and sad because the mangroves are mostly dead, but it is cool to walk through. Tamarino Beach, like the main strip beach, very touristy, but very clean. Uh, they had like a ton of really nice restaurants that we walked around at nighttime and we ate some really nice food. So it was a really cute place to like have a nice little date night and stuff like that in Tamarino. And they have, Uber is like vast, it's everywhere in Tamarindo. We stayed in an Airbnb about to Playa Negra, which was like 20, 30 minutes, not, probably like 20 minute drive uh, from Tamarindo. It was hard to get an Uber from where we live, but we ended up getting a driver's number because we were outside of the main strip. If you stay in like a busy main strip area, it's no problem. So we could get an Uber home. We could never get an Uber back. So that was annoying. Uh, we use taxis and Ubers. They're both pretty prevalent. Um, I think cost-wise, Uber was slightly more expensive. For the wedding week, we went to Haco, Costa Rica, which is not actually like relatively close to the airport considering the other places are like three to four hours. Very, very touristy. The city is big. It's kind of like San Jose. It's very busy. Not as big as San Jose. So I really, we stayed technically outside of Haco. I liked it like that. I went to Haco downtown once and I only needed to do it once. I just went, wanted to do some shopping because I hadn't experienced it yet. We did go to Haco Beach. Haco Beach is the touristy beach, but it's very calm waters compared to Playa Hermosa, which is what our house was on. And those were like where all the surf tournaments are at. So the waves were really big. And I talked about this in my Tortuga vlog, but the waves were so, so big, but you can't tell how big they are. But I swear to God, they are so big. These waves are actually massive. I've never been to like a surfing coast that's like time for surfing and Paco is one of them, which means bad for kayak fishing for Ray, but cool for my dad, I guess. Paco. Paco Beach, it's calmer. That's where we did like our introductory surfing lesson and stuff like that. That was really cool. Woo, that's it, yeah. Hold your board.
party city. It's very known for an adult party city. Prostitution's legal. There's a lot of bachelor parties that happen out there. Things get crazy. They are trying to market it more for families and build more family friendly things to do, but it is a adult party town. So there's some craziness going on. There's a lot of clubs, a lot of dancing, bars, stuff like that to do. Walk it down, Haka. How's the coffee, Heather? Oh, there's a, okay. I haven't sipped it yet because it's hot. Oh, you go in there? Yeah. Haka does, well, it's not only beaches, it's not only partying. Uh, some of the family friendly things you can do is Manuel Antonio. Unfortunately, I did not get to do anything I wanted to do because um, the wedding. Where you want to go see your monkeys, your sloths, your birds. They also have a butterfly park that's really cool. So it is a national park. It's Costa Rica's smallest national park. It was found by Ponce de Leon, which he was on his way looking for the Fountain of Youth. And he said, hey man, there's a lot of riches here in Costa Rica. He was at Manuel Antonio, gold in Costa Rica. So they were making some stuff up. Um, is it there? I don't know. Go find it. <laughs> Manuel Antonio is $18 to get in. You do have to pay like $6 to park. There are tours, so the group tour is only $5 different from a private tour. So it's like $55 for a group tour for an adult and $60 for a private tour for an adult. Might as well get a private tour. If you have never had a private tour in Costa Rica by like a really knowledgeable wildlife guide, I would suggest getting one. Um, you'll see a lot more wildlife that way because they know what to look for. Um, sloths tend to stay in the same general area for a very long time, so that they've been there the whole time. They're looking for wildlife because they get better tips the more wildlife they find, to be honest. If you haven't had a wildlife guide, you don't know what to look for, you've never been in Costa Rica, I, I think it's worthwhile. The park is all wheelchair accessible which is really cool because how many hikes can you do with someone especially in costa rica and antonio is like one of the biggest highlights you can go to in Haco. i life everywhere when you're in costa rica there's always jungle access trails um i would use your all trails app and try to find some there if you're just like hey i want to hit a trail Haco is one of the points that you can travel to uh, tortuga island from it is the farthest access point to tortuga island uh, you can also get to T Tortuga Island from San Jose. It's like 45 minute boat ride there and back to the island. Um, but it was definitely worth it. That's something else you can do. Uh, I have a whole Tortuga video if you want to get more details on views and what we kind of did there of a vlog. But definitely a really cool private day tour. Don't plan anything else. If you went to Tortuga Island, you're going to be in the sun all day. You're going to be exhausted. Via Caletas was our hotel that we stayed at for the wedding. I talked about this briefly, but it's a beautiful hotel. You can go down to Via Caletas just to see the sunset. Um, so actually in the amphitheater where we got married, um, if there's no wedding there that day, you can just show up and be like, hey, I wanna come in for the sunset if there's no event, and they'll let you go down and watch it from the amphitheater, and you can get a drink by the bar, you can eat at the dinner place, but you don't have to. Um, so that's something they offer. So we found our wedding spot. It's a lot smaller than I thought, but it's still very pretty. And I have no idea how we're gonna go down these stairs with two people. So glad I'm looking at it. The whole Via Caletas Hotel has been um, structured by the views that the uh, architect 
wanted so there's like all these little nooks and crannies of these little lookouts like even i was amazed by like the yoga area it has this beautiful <laughs> lookout i really wanted my first look there but they said it didn't really make sense just really pretty out here this lens is really cool but i think i should probably take it off oh wow there is like a little secret sun bathing little hideaway this hotel is just built so cool there's all these like tiny nooks and crannies like you're, you're walking through this maze you don't see anything but jungle and ocean and then you just see like this beautiful lookout spot and then you walk a little bit more and you see another beautiful lookout spot like literally everything is designed based off of like views the ocean and the jungle and it's just like so pretty and it's my two favorite things ray loves the ocean and i love so it's combining the two is just really exciting and i think really cool because that's where we're getting married so it's like combining us you know i thought all this through this is the side of our hotel um it's not it's the honeymoon suite but it's not the honeymoon suite that i thought we were supposed to get because she told us it was the one that was listed online and this one isn't it but it is still beautiful we have a beautiful view around the hot tub we have like this part is my absolute favorite view but with the mountains in the background we got some little sun chairs and then we have our nice like infinity pool <laughs> Coming right now. Here oh. you go. It's a beautiful hotel. I honestly probably could have stayed there a week. They have a beautiful spa that I got um, on my wedding day that helped a ton because I was like sick to my stomach the night before and the day of. So that helped out a lot. It was a beautiful spa. You get up when you're done and you just see this beautiful view again with the views of just like the sun over the ocean and the jungle just like frames it perfectly. That was honestly like one of the coolest things for me is just like getting up and it's just like, you hear the birds, you hear just like the nature out there. And like, this is the most relaxing massage I have ever had. It's more resorty. It's the most resorty place I've stayed at in Costa Rica. If you are staying in Hako, you want a resort experience, you want like a very secluded, isolated place. Like each room, you can't hear the rooms around you. They're surrounded by jungle. They're beautiful. They have all these little hide hideouts and coolest place to stay at for sure so anyway so that is Hako enjoy Hako go to Hako there's definitely all these activities things to book there that's not strictly partying and um you can also zip line there just like you can zip line anywhere in Costa Rica <laughs> that was an overview of Costa Rica we've gone from San Jose, Monteverde, La Fortuna, Guanacaste, Hako Hope you enjoyed this overview of Costa Rica. Hope you enjoyed some of the footage I took while I was gone these two weeks. And yeah, go travel Costa Rica. It's beautiful. Uh, plan your trip accordingly. Don't rush. Allow plenty of time to get where you need to go. And yeah, go a couple times because you're not gonna see everything that you wanna see anyway. So cool, go see some, go see some flaws. Bye.